Welcome to the week eight garden tour here at Reach and Reverie. I'm so excited to show you everything new and exciting that's happened this week on our little homestead. Let's go take a look, follow me. All right guys, so this is that front garden bed with our pole beans and herbs. And I do wanna kind of warn you guys, I was so excited going into this week because there's so many new and exciting things. And then about three and a half, four hours ago, we had a massive hailstorm. So there's gonna be a lot of damage that we're gonna see, but I'm thinking everything should be okay. I have my Market More Cucumber and it is flowering and it's almost gonna reach that trellis and start climbing the trellis. So hopefully we'll have some cucumbers here in a little bit. My French breakfast radish is <laughs> becoming monstrous. Hi, my love. Evie wants to get in on this video. My French breakfast ra radish is monstrous. I want it to flower. We're gonna save seed from that. Um, I have a cantaloupe right here that's almost gonna reach the trellis as well. It hasn't put any flowers out yet, but it's getting close. What is it, Evie? What do you wanna tell me? You wanna play? Is that what it is? You just want attention? You want some um, back scratches? Evie has to be in the center of everything. She's our princess, aren't you? You're our little princess. Okay, I'm gonna do my video. She's gonna try to follow me. My cilantro is getting huge and the leaves, if you look at the bottom leaves, how thick they are and then the top leaves, it makes me think that this thing has bolted. I can actually see on the end here it's gonna shoot out some flowers here pretty soon. So that has already bolted from how hot it is. And I knew it would. Look at these leaves, they're getting a lot of sun. So that made sense. My purple potted pole beans and Kentucky green beans are doing fantastic. I think that they are gonna start flowering soon and we are gonna get some beans off of these. I keep having to come in and redirect this thing somewhere else because we do not want this growing in the window unit. But they are all just intertwining with each other and they're gonna give us some beans here pretty soon. They are showing some sun, sun spots, but we are out here in West Texas and we just get scorching hot sunlight all the time. I have a blue Sirius sage right here and right here. And this one's actually deciding that it is gonna flower. So that's super exciting, I'm really excited about that. I can already see a little bit of hail damage. We had quarter sized hail. And in the span of about half an hour, we got flash flooding all over town and lots of lots of rain. I have my catnip, um, I have three yarrow plants, and then I have a peppermint balsam that I planted in the back, and that is flowering, and I just love my peppermint balsam. It's only been in this garden bed for about two weeks. I started it in the greenhouse back in February, and it is now May 23rd. So that's how long it took to flower. This is one of my favorite plants in the world. I just think it's gorgeous. The leaves are gorgeous. The flowers are really pretty. This is the peppermint balsam. And then my little, yarrow is very healthy. My little blue butterfly pea down here at the bottom. It's also doing pretty good. I think it was really protected from the hailstorm that we had. Uh, my sunflowers are finally deciding to flower. That thing is just so pretty. I don't know what kind of sunflower that is. I actually was gifted a seed packet from my mother-in-law and it just said sunflowers. So I planted it and it's really pretty yellow. So here we're gonna see our really first significant damage from the hailstorm with these. Look at this. That is just awful. All of these leaves just torn up from the hail that we were having. I was luckily home for lunch when this hailstorm hit and I actually didn't get the chance to protect my garden at all because the chickens were out free ranging 
and when I looked out the window, I was gonna go put the, I realized it was hailing, I went to go put the chickens up, and they were all just so scared of the hail that they weren't coming to anything or treats, so we had to go and individually put each chicken in the chicken run so they would be protected from the hail, and they were getting just, they were soaking wet by the time we got all nine of them into the run, just petrified. But they're all doing okay, they're all dry now. This is a teddy bear sunflower. So all of our chickens are okay. Some of them lost some feathers, but I mean, from the hail, I mean, we got out there within probably 15 seconds of when it started hailing and it was just quarter sized hail right away. But everybody's happy and healthy. Now the plants, um, I realized afterwards, I'm like, you know, my chickens come first before the garden, um, but we are seeing some hail damage in here I can see already my watermelon has look at that that's how big that hail was it's just torn up all these leaves my nasturtium over here is flowering even though he got a little battered so this one's a really pretty orange and then I have a really pretty salmon over here so I'm hoping that these plants will recover I mean a lot of their leaves are really really torn but and I see already look his the flower got hailed on too so we'll come back next week too and see how much of this hail really affected these plants this is one of my tomatillos that got hailed on and these plants are under the protection of this massive pecan tree that's like three stories three and a half story tall pecan tree and it's still really got these guys I can see here this one got hit with the hail um, on my husky red cherry tomato I do have cherry tomatoes starting to form I see three we have one two three cherry tomatoes starting to form on this plant I cannot wait to try these tomatoes they're just gonna be juicy and delicious being homegrown here in our backyard um, around the side and this little flower pot I have a red bell pepper plant three vincas flowers and a blue beauty um, beefsteak tomato that I had pruned and propagated and I can see here this was a beautiful healthy plant this morning and look at that hail damage these leaves are just looking like Swiss cheese over here and I'm so sad because going into this garden tour week, um, all week I've been so excited to show you guys all the progress we've made. My vincas have established really well. Um, I had been worried about them, separating them, um, because they were root bound and the three of them and they have just really adjusted pretty well even though they got a little bit of hail damage. I actually think the vincas were pretty protected from my unfortunate bell pepper plant so we'll see he has some nice new leaves I think I might end up picking these off if they don't recover but we're gonna watch him and see how he does he has a little flower bud right there so that's good news come on little guy we'll see how they do oh my love my sweet love let's go into the back garden and I want to show you all the chickens and look at that, even though it thunderstormed and we got probably at least two or three inches of rain, it's 80 degrees outside. So during the hailstorm that we had, um, the ground was flooded all the way from here all the way around to about here. And you couldn't even tell that we had any ground here. I mean, here, this is hours later, we're still flooded right there. Um, stepping stones are covered didn't do much good in the rain and then the water was up to the second step covering the second step and our girls man it was so sad I went out here when I got home from lunch and it was drizzling and I tried to get the girls to go into the chicken run and they were fine um, they were huddled underneath the protection of the trees and this was before the hail so I went back inside ate my lunch I came out I was gonna go back to work checked on him again and that's when I saw it was hailing and I think the sound of the hail scared the girls 
and instead of running for cover, they were already under cover. They came out and they all huddled like a little group of penguins right here without any shelter. I mean, they had shelter from this pecan tree, but they were just huddled right here and <laughs> it started hailing. So I ran out here and I was holding an umbrella over my nine girls while Louise came and grabbed one by one and took them to the chicken run while I huddled over them, protecting them from the hail for the majority. Now they did get soaking wet. <laughs> so I got a towel and I towel dried them and I put them in the run, gave them a lot of hay and look at this, they are now completely dry. I think they were a little shocked. They had never seen hail before, but they're already recovering. Dua, I think got the worst of the hail she had a, a couple feathers missing on her head, but she's doing good. Hey, Dua. You're doing good. Yeah. So that was scary. It rained on us today, and it had some, some falling ice cubes. Yeah, but she's okay. We got there. We ran out here as soon as it started. Um, I did not even know that that hill was coming, and there's some of the other girls eating under the table. Hey, girls. So we're heading on to our back garden bed and I wanted to show you my cucamelon. And this plant was very well protected from the hail because it's under this nice pine tree. And look at this, I'm gonna zoom in. That right there are two young doves that have hatched in our yard and they're growing up and their mom and dad are still taking care of them. But we see them, they hang out in this tree. Thought that was pretty neat. They actually were in a nest. I'll show you their nest before I show you my cake melon. I'm on a tangent. Their nest that they hatched out of is right here. And one of their parents is actually sitting on that nest. I wonder if they have new eggs or if they're just sitting on there. I don't know why, but the mom and dad take turns sitting on this nest while the other babies are in this tree. So that makes me wonder if um, doves hatch multiple clutches per season. Man, the wind's picking up. I wonder if the rain's gonna come back. So, on my cucamelon, I have a cucamelon starting to form. I'm gonna try to focus it, but it is really windy. There it is, that's my cucamelon. And this one still has a little bit to grow. It's gonna end up being about the size of a grape. Right now, it's probably the size of like a pinky digit on your finger. So, um, I, it might be ready in another week, maybe two weeks. We'll get to try a little cucamelon. Hi, Miss Yasha. You didn't like the rain either, huh? So in the garden, we did get some hail damage, but I'm hoping everything's gonna survive. I'd moved my sage and my lemon balm back here because I wasn't watering them very well when they were in the front yard. Um, so I moved them back here. I wanted them to harden off before I put them in the ground because I noticed that they were, they were in a greenhouse setting, I think, from the hardware store I bought them from. So I wanted them to adjust before I really full on put them in there. So where they are right now, they get a lot more shade and it's kind of filtered and so I'm thinking that here in another few days, I'll go ahead and plant them out into the herb garden. My cucamelon over here still hanging on to the tree trunk. I haven't seen any melons on this plant yet. So keep them on looking. This parsley plant who's bolted is doing great for providing, um, bringing pollinators into the garden, but he is looking really sad. This is a cool weather plant that's did amazing over the winter, handled frost and snow really well, and as soon as it got above 80 degrees, it started dying back. Marigolds are doing good. It was actually all the way up to the leaves, and with the hail, it has been knocked down, and it looks like it's missing some leaves. My okra is doing good. I'm almost sure that this is a uh, sweet pea, and I'm almost sure that these are poppy seeds, poppy seedlings, and then a marigold right there. I also planted green um, basil in this pot, but I don't see any coming up. 
So this Bolero Marigold is yellow. I thought that was really cool because the rest of my um, Bolero Marigolds, sorry, <laughs> the rest of my Bolero Marigolds are red and orange. So that's really refreshing to see in the garden. I almost pulled this plant out because it's sharing a home with this corn. And I decided not to pull it out and I'm really glad I didn't because I get this really pretty yellow flower. And I'll show you, my other Boleros are a really pretty orange and a really nice deep red. So we get lots of variety here. Uh, my corn is growing nice and big. This is probably waist high. I need to add more support because I have these down here. I think I'm going to add another um, row of twine to help kind of support these because I notice when it gets windy they kind of blow over. Corn has really shallow roots and you have to support it. I do have some bamboo supporting the ones in the middle and I think those are doing the best. The ones on, the, on this side are getting shaded from the um, zucchini and then the ones on this side are getting shaded from the other corn. So the ones in the middle are doing really, really well. My Black Beauty Zucchini did not like the hailstorm. I don't see a lot of damage on the leaves itself, but look at this. It just completely has just flopped over. This morning it was, comp it was filling up the bed really nicely. And I've actually been pruning him a lot because he's been out competing my corn and covering up my marigolds. But I didn't realize he was going to flop over the way he is. So I still have some nice flowers that don't look too damaged. Um, and then I have some female flowers down here that potentially, if they get fertilized, will give us some um, zucchini. My ground cherries, they're looking pretty good. This is not hail damage. This is actually bug damage. So they survived pretty well. I think they were protected from my, um, from my tomatillos and this pecan tree also kind of protected them a little bit. Now if we take a look, I have ground cherries on the vine, on the stems, and this is just full of them. There's probably at least 20 ground cherries just on this plant. And I have two plants in this raised garden bed. So that's amazing. Now these husks, I already felt them. I got really excited and I was like, wow, these mature really fast. We're gonna have a lot of ground cherries this season. And then um, when I feel it, it's actually almost empty and you can feel a little ground cherry in there. But what happens is the husk forms and it gets up to size and it'll, it'll grow a little more. But, um, the little ground cherries fill it out from the inside and you'll actually know when these things are ripe because they'll drop to the ground hence their name ground cherry so I'm not gonna pick these until I'm not gonna pick these at all I'm just gonna wait until they drop and once they fall on the ground I will try them and I'll get to show you guys how ground cherries taste and see there's a lot on this plant as well and it's such a neat little flower fruit their flowers are really pretty really pretty little yellow cute flowers I am a little disappointed with how buggy these are, but you know what? I am trying to have an all natural garden. I don't want pesticides or chemicals in my garden. So that is just something I'm gonna have to deal with here. You can see some tomatillo flowers. That's beautiful. It's not just beautiful. And I have a tomatillo right there. And this is, again, is the same thing, but it's not actually that big. If I feel the, feel the husk, it's actually, it's actually about this wide in there. So it'll fill that up and um, it'll actually push out the husk a little bit when it's ready. And you, you'll know, it's not ready yet. I just gotta be patient. And there's a few more on this um, tomatillo bush, but they're not nearly as big. So we'll get there. I think this is so exciting about gardening. I, I will come out and every single day I'll find something new and I'll see something that's grown even bigger. My marigolds are doing really good for bringing in things into the garden. I can see here, this is hail damage. Get rid of that. 
So my, um, this is the bed that I have my in-ground um, beefsteak tomatoes. And this beefsteak tomato is doing fantastic. I have not been pruning the suckers on this plant just because I wanna see what a tomato looks like when it grows as naturally as possible. So the only thing I've been doing is pruning um, leaves that look kind of sickly or buggy. I'll, I'll pick those off, but I'm in no way telling the tomato how big to grow or limiting it in any way on this tomato. I am in the, in the rest of my garden. And then this is the tomato plant that was here that last week's video you could see that the stem had broken and so I went ahead and tried to plant it in the ground to see if it would propagate itself and it did not. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out this week and plant something else here in this spot instead. I also had a Cracker Jack Marigold right here and something got to it. I was watching it and it was overnight. It had to have been like a caterpillar or something. Overnight, it was completely eaten. So it looks like it's still alive. Maybe it'll come back, but I really doubt it. I might just plant something right here in their place. My little um, black Hungarian jalapenos are doing good. These are the ones that were stunted. And they are actually getting bigger. I think they are. So I'm gonna let them do their thing. And they're such a cute addition to my garden. I think that this brick wall protected them from the hail. I also had, they had protection from this tomato plant and a crepe myrtle that drapes over the fence. So these guys were not damaged by the hail. And the fennel, I think the fennel likes the cooler weather that we had from the rainstorm and the hail. It's actually a lot greener than I've seen it in a while. Now my pansies, they're doing pretty good. Got a little um, leggy on this back one. And my bachelor button has not liked the heat. A lot of my flowers haven't, but this poppy is doing wonderfully. My zinnia is doing pretty good. It got some hail, hail damage today. And then my Art Combs Ancient Watermelon Look at how big it is. I was so excited to show you guys. It's coming all the way out here. It has an arm that's going back there somewhere. I don't know where he wants to grow. It looks like he's coming up behind the kale. And then an arm that goes, a couple arms that come out of the bed and just go all the way, almost to the end of my garden. And he did get hail damaged. This was part of my watermelon, came off. And I can see Several of his leaves are broken from the hail, but I think he's gonna survive. He's gonna make a good comeback. He is growing out so well, and he actually got his first flower this week, so that's really promising. My little pansy down here was really well protected from the hail. My kale is doing okay. It's getting a little buggy. My broccoli is pitiful. <laughs> it's not the time of year to grow broccoli, guys. And I can see my kale also did not like the hail. Look at this. This is rotten. I'm going to give that to the chickens. Look at that. That's what 10 minutes of hail will do to your garden. There you go, girls. I don't think anyone saw that. They'll find it. And I have a blue butterfly pea right there as well. He's gonna grow nice and big and give me some blue flowers. My cucamelons, oh my gosh, look at this. They are growing all the way up and around and all the way up almost to the top of this five foot tall fence. Isn't that just amazing? Incredible. <laughs> hey guys. So my camera actually just died. So I had to go get another battery. Shame on me. I didn't charge it in advance. So we're gonna go back and jump in and I'm gonna show you the rest of this garden tour. Um, I'm sorry guys that I really wanted this to be an exciting week and it still is. Eight, week eight garden tour is still very exciting. We have lots of really cool things to see in our garden and lots of really nice developments the plants are getting nice and big but man the hail is such a bummer 
Like, but that's one of those things, you just gotta roll with the punches and gardening is not perfect. And part of gardening is dealing with when things like this happen. And it's okay, look at that. Look at that sadness. But overall, the tomato plant is still fine. So, all of my plants, generally, the plants are gonna be fine. And they might have some damage that might set them back a little bit, but I think in the grand scheme of things, we're still incredibly ahead of schedule this year. I took a big gamble by planting all of these plants. I started them in my greenhouse on February 12th of this year. That's super early. My last frost date here in Western Texas in the Chihuahuan Desert isn't technically until mid-April. Um, we've even had frost as late as May 1st. So um, I actually planted all of these into the garden on April 1st. So I took a huge gamble. This is my first year gardening and I wanted to go big. So I did. And a lot of these things are really big right now and we are getting hail and there are, is gonna be challenges but it's one of those things where you just gotta gamble with the garden and you can tell yourself that there's always next year if something bad happens or there's always, we have a really long season. I'm telling myself with this tomato plant that really discouraged me when it um, died really soon, I was losing all of the harvest that I could get out of this tomato plant and I told myself, you know, it's still really early in our season some people are just now getting their tomatoes in the ground. Some people are just now planting their peppers in the ground. So there's still time for me to plant something else there. Um, so if you get guys get a lot of damage where you are, or a late freeze, or maybe you plant it early and it's a normal freeze, but you had to deal with your plants getting frozen and dying, or hail damage, like just keep at it. Keep trying. It's gonna be okay. So my tomatillos are just, huge I just love it um, they have probably reached five feet tall now and I'm not seeing a lot of fruit being fertilized I, I don't know if that's the right word for plant talk I've not seen a lot of these um, turning into fruits being pollinated they haven't been pollinated very much and I noticed that this big guy over here I actually hand pollinated that flower. So I might come in here with a little Q-tip and hand pollinate this plant, or these three plants, because I really want them to give us more than just a handful of tomatillos this year for how big and lush and green they are. Look at them pointing to the sunlight. I think it's cool, a cool afternoon for them. They are positively pointing towards the sunlight right now. Isn't that amazing? how adaptable and how um, reactive these plants are to their environment. Uh, my dark green zucchini fared a lot better than my black beauty. He is still right where he's supposed to be. He got some hail damage, but overall, wonderfully, doing wonderfully. Corn's doing really good. I have a coneflower that I brought in. I actually went and bought this one from the store. Every time I go to the store, I always cave and I buy something that makes me happy. And seeing a lot of my plants not getting pollinated and seeing poor pollination really made me want to just bring some flowers home so that I could have more, attract more things to our garden. My, oh, my poor little cantaloupe. Look at that. He got hit with the hail too. He is actually going up my trellis. He's right here and he has flowers, so maybe we'll get some cantaloupe. My butternut squash, it's getting pretty big. The chickens are keeping it smaller than it could be because it keeps trying to grow out towards the chickens and they bite off the ends. You can see they bite off the ends and like the leaves, look at this leaf, it's just chewed up by the chickens. And I, this is a, a side effect of poor pollination this fruit right here has blossom and rot and just it was really beautiful a few days ago and I can really see that it's not not gonna turn into anything it just fell right off when I touched it so very sad but that's okay it's still early enough these plants are gonna make more flowers I already see more flowers on this plant more buds so we'll get a couple butternut squash I did prune this back quite a bit 
because this whole area was just full of leaves and a lot of the leaves on the bottom were doing kind of poorly. That's the same thing with my two acorn squashes. A lot of their leaves were starting to turn yellow. I think it was getting overcrowded. So I went ahead and I pruned out all of the bottom leaves and I just left a lot of the new growth. And you can see I have an acorn squash right there. And then I have another little acorn squash on my other plant. So that's pretty cool. Might get some acorn squash this year. Lots of flowers. And my, um, I was gonna say this was a tomato. My pumpkins over here is also doing okay. He's grown a lot this week and look at this. All the little holes all in him from the hail. Pumpkin, their leaves are just so big it's, and beautiful. The hail just went right through them. That makes me really sad. Look at that. But he'll recover, he'll do okay. Look at that flower. That right there is hope. Look at all those flowers down there. So we'll get some pumpkins before the end of the season. My okra is getting nice and big. He's flowered a few times and the flowers are beautiful white flowers. I also see a Mexican mint growing in that pot. And that makes me happy because the Mexican mint I had in the front bed died with the hailstorm today too. So I have a Mexican mint right there. I also have another teddy bear sunflower that decided to flower this week. Isn't that so pretty? And I can see more buds all down the stem of this plant. So that's gonna be neat. We're gonna get lots of pretty sunflowers to brighten the mood in this garden, especially after a hailstorm here on our little homestead. So this year, I'm not depending on this garden for food for our family's success. This is more a learning experience and a classroom for me to dive into gardening so that in the years to come, when we actually move out onto a real homestead and start um, trying to produce our own food in a way that can make us self-sustainable, I want to know what I'm doing. So I this year, I am rolling with the punches and just taking all of this and soaking it up and learning from these experiences. On my eggplant, you can see some hail damage, but I also see a lot of bug damage. So these plants were already getting kind of eaten up. They are flowering, so that's a good sign. And my opal um, basil is doing good. It seems immune to the bugs that are eating the eggplant. They don't like basil, so that's pretty cool. My, look at these um, jalapenos. They are just getting so big. These gotta be like two and a half feet tall. And I have my two black Hungarian and my three brown jalapenos. My black Hungarian jalapenos are actually starting to fruit. And look at that, that there is a black Hungarian jalapeno pepper. And I see lots of flowers on my plants. So we're gonna get more jalapenos here pretty soon. I can see one right there too. Isn't that neat? I just love it when you see fruit growing. Like, that's what this is all about right here. Amazing. I haven't had any on my brown jalapenos yet, but I think that, you know, it is a different variety. I do see flowers. Um, buds starting to develop. So that's okay. We'll start with our black Hungarian jalapenos and then we'll add um, these to the table as they develop here later on. It doesn't look like we got too much hail damage on the jalapenos. Their leaves are a lot sturdier and um, I think the hail just kind of bounced off of them. There it is. I do see a couple leaves. Bummer. But overall, um, these guys look really good for this weather that we had. They did great. I have my four albino bell peppers and they're producing amazingly beautiful, stunning white flowers on these plants. Really pretty white flowers. And I do see one flower over here that looks like it fell off from the hail. And on this plant, I actually have an albino bell pepper starting to form. Look at it right there. Isn't he cute? 
to me he looks like a little acorn i just think that's the cutest little thing a little bell pepper i didn't know what they would look like starting out and that's really neat it's pretty my other dark opal basil is doing really good i've actually harvested some of this and put him on spaghetti that we had this week i made a spaghetti squash we have a train that passes through like every half hour here <laughs> It's not the same train, obviously, but living out here in the desert, you get trains and horses and chickens and all kinds of stuff. So my nasturtiums are doing really well. They seem to have made it through the hailstorm pretty good. My goodness. Um, I have another orange and another salmon. So that's really cool. My tomato plants look like they were unfazed by the hail. Obviously we have a couple branches that are um, hit, but we didn't really take any losses today on our tomatoes. This plant is doing poorly. He's really stunted. He's half the size of my other tomato plants. He might be even less than half the size of my other tomato plants. And he is growing fruit, but the fruit is not getting much bigger. Like I notice it's just kind of staying the same size. And then all of the leaves on him are curled and I don't know. I've never experienced this before. And this is something that is good to see my first year gardening. I'm gonna get to do some research and be ready next year for whatever this is. Maybe it's just poor genetics on this plant. Maybe it's something I did wrong, but the rest of the plants in this garden bed seem to be doing okay. So I'm not really sure what that's about. See these plants, these tomatoes started growing like a week or two after the other plant and they're the exact same size tomatoes so don't know what's going on there I have this big guy I've been watching him really closely like a little kid in a candy shop waiting to see if he's gonna be ready to pick so he's gonna turn red before I pick him but he's looking really good really juicy that is a big tomato got several others on this plant and then another one back here we have another cluster so we're gonna get lots of tomatoes here coming up it takes several weeks once you see a tomato growing on your plant it takes several weeks before they're gonna be ripe enough to pick but you can eat green tomatoes they're really good sliced and fried so we'll see how much patience I have you guys I gotta hang in there now these tomatoes are almost as tall as I am I have been pruning back the tomatoes on this garden bed to one or two main stalks and I've been pruning all suckers so anytime a stem grows in the armpit of these tomatoes I am pulling them off because there's enough competition for airflow and real estate on these in this garden bed and I also want to make sure that these tomatoes can put a lot of energy into the fruit that they're growing and not put too much energy into just growing leaves and foliage because they're already almost to the top of this trellis and it's only getting to the middle of May. So that was my garden this week, you guys. I'm really excited. We have fruit starting to grow. Um, nothing's really ready to pick yet, but that's part of the fun in this journey. It's coming out and just seeing change. It doesn't mean you have to harvest all the time. You're just seeing change and learning from these experiences. So. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you liked um, this garden tour, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We make new garden videos, new garden tour videos every single week, posted every Sunday. We also do occasional chicken videos and videos about our puppy dogs coming up. And we also have a new animal that is on our homestead. We got two kittens last week and they are just a full bundle of joy. We got two boys, little Russell and Remy, and we're gonna come out with videos about them soon enough. Well, thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all next week. Happy homesteading.